More questions based on literary theory. Here they come. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat to help you prepare better, nicer for the upcoming net exam. Here I am with questions based on literary theory. The most important part of these questions is we're going to discuss them in detail, even the options in detail. So when you complete with this video, you will have a detailed or a comprehensive idea of what we spoke about. Yes, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, Walad by Dr. Kalyani Walad, we specialize in helping you ace exams related to English literature. You know it, but the ones who are new, I thought I'll tell you. So please do subscribe to our channel and of course share it with your friends and relatives. So can I start with first question of the day based on literary theory? Here it is. Question number one, the medium is the message, is a concept given by, the medium is the message. A. Seymour Hirsch, B. Sylvia Platt, C. Ernest Hemingway, or D. Marshall McLuhan. The medium is the message, is given by the father of, in fact, the father of media studies, Marshall McLuhan. So the answer is option D. Look at Marshall McLuhan on the screen. He was a Canadian communication theorist and a philosopher. Marshall lived from 1911 to 1980 and his works literally are the touchstones of the study of media theory. And that is why he plays such an important role in media studies. Anybody who's doing a course in media studies knows that the father of media studies is Marshall McLuhan. It is he, Marshall, who said that medium is the message. In his book named Understanding Media, The Extensions of Man, also another important term which was coined by Marshall was global village. Global village is very commonly used in schools and colleges these days, okay? It's like a melting pot of cultures. And you should know Marshall predicted the birth of WWW, that is World Wide Web, almost 30 years before it was invented. Like three decades before WWW came, Marshall knew that this is how technology would change and benefit the humans. Now let's talk about the medium is the message. Iska matlab kya hai? The name of the book is Understanding Media, The Extension of Man, Man published in 1964. And you should know Marshall also wrote a book Titled Medium is the Message, an Inventory of Effects, published in 1967. What is the meaning of this term? McLuhan says that a communication medium is itself the primary focus of study and not the message that it carries. Please understand again, the communication medium that is used to give away the content, that medium is important rather than the content. Okay. This means that throughout history, what has been communicated to the people, to the society is less important than the medium through which the people have communicated. I'll give an example. Let's understand transition from oral culture to print based ones. During oral culture, the entire focus was on auditory senses because we heard, we heard, we heard everything was oral. So our auditory sense had to be very strong. But then from oral culture, we shifted, we shifted to print. Things got printed on a paper. You can see what I have written here, right? This changed the sense from auditory to visual. We have to see and understand, see and understand. So how technology changed from oral to print, that is more important than the media, than, you know, the message that was given through it or the message that is given either in oral culture or in print culture. That message is not what is important, but the medium is the message. The transition from oral to print is a message in itself. One more line that I want to state here is, the technology that transfers the message is more important than the content it carries because it is technology that changes an individual and a society as a whole. Yes, easy, nice. We're done with question number one. The medium is the message concept given by Marshall McLuhan. In fact, he's written a book by the same name. Let's move on to question number two. 
who among the following Marxist critics have reconsidered the classic problem of base and superstructure related to literature? A. Walter Benjamin, B. Lucien Goldman, C. Edmund Wilson, or D. Raymond Williams. One of these persons revisited base and superstructure. See, base and superstructure was a concept given by Karl Marx. Karl Marx. He spoke that society is made up of two parts, base and superstructure. But who revisited this concept in relation to literature? It is option D, Raymond Williams. Let's study about this in detail. Look at Raymond Williams on the screen. A Welsh socialist writer who lived from 1921 to 1988. His literary ideas contributed to the Marxist critique of society. It was Raymond who wrote a book, a very famous book, of course, called Culture and Society in the 1950s, in which a chapter is titled Base and Superstructure. Okay, and as I told you, originally this theory was propounded by Karl Marx, but Raymond Williams revisited and reanalyzed this base and superstructure because he says, or Raymond Williams said, that there is more to base and superstructure than what Karl Marx said. So should I tell you the difference between their two ideas? But before that, you should know what is base in a society and what is superstructure. According to Karl Marx, a society is made of two parts, base and superstructure. Base is the production force or the material or the resource that a society needs to sustain itself. Okay, the production force, for example, labor class, workers, they all come under base. Whereas superstructure is anything in society that is not directly related to the production of goods. That is superstructure. For example, arts, culture, law, education, all the subjects, philosophy, media, politics, religion, all that is superstructure. Whereas base is the production material and the resources that a society uses to sustain itself. Now, the difference in the ideology of Karl Marx and Raymond Williams. Karl Marx originally said that base determines the superstructure. But Williams said no. Karl Marx said superstructure is the reflection of the base. Williams said no. Karl Marx said base is static. But Williams said base is dynamic, ever changing. This is a major thing related to the difference of base and superstructure, the ideas by Karl Marx and the re-ideas by Raymond Williams in his work, Culture and Society. Look at Raymond Williams again. So now can you answer? The following Marxist critic reconsidered the classic problem of base and superstructure in relation to literature. He is none other than Raymond Williams. Tick. Chalo, match the following. List one with list two. List one has authors. List two are the works written by them. Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida, Northrop Fry, Cloud Levi Strauss. These are the four authors. And the book's names are Of Grammatology, The Archaeology of Knowledge, Structural Anthropology, and Anatomy of Criticism. Which author has penned which book? Just take a look, a little look. It is option A2143. Let's make it super easy by this page. Michel Foucault wrote The Archaeology of Knowledge. Jacques Derrida wrote Of Grammatology. Northrop Fry wrote Anatomy of Criticism. Whereas Claudie Levi Strauss wrote Structural Anthropology. Abhi aise to chhodeng in his question ko. Ek dam research karenge. So come on, let's start with The Archaeology of Knowledge by Michel Foucault. Look at Michel on the screen. The book he wrote is The Archaeology of Knowledge, published in 1969. Michel was a French historian. And this book, The Archaeology of Knowledge, is a treatise about the methodology and the historiography of epistems and discursive formations. You'll say, what is epistem? What is discursive formation? Let me tell you. Epistems are the systems of thought. 
whereas discursive formations is the knowledge. So a treatise about epistems and discursive formations or systems of thought and knowledge is discussed in the archaeology of knowledge. And both of these epistem and discursive formation, they operate beneath the consciousness of the individual and they determine the boundary of language and thought used in a given time and domain. So just remember the archaeology of knowledge of 1969 by Foucault is about epistems and discursive formations. Easy. Next, next work. The work is of grammatology, published in 1967, written by Jacques Derrida, again a French philosopher. Look at Jacques on the screen. I feel the more you look at their faces, the more are the chances of you remembering about them during the examination. That is why I keep their photos. Photos are important, I feel. For me, very important. Visual is important. So that one is Michel Foucault. This is Jacques Derrida. He wrote of Grammatology, published in 1967. And this book of Grammatology introduced deconstruction to the world. So if ever deconstruction idea or the concept is related to of grammatology by Jacques Derrida, a French philosopher. And very important point, of grammatology was originally written in French and the translator of this work was Gayatri Spivak, Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak. Okay, aage bade. After of Grammatology by Derrida, the next work is Anatomy of Criticism, four essays by Northrop Fry. Look at Mr. Fry on the screen. Anatomy of Criticism, four essays was published in 1957. Northrop Fry was a Canadian literary critic and a theorist. This book, Anatomy of Criticism, is based or it talks of the principles and techniques of literary criticism derived exclusively from literature, not right or left, only literature. That's anatomy of criticism. And because the complete title is anatomy of criticism for essays, question has come. What are these four essays? Can we name them? Can we name them? One, historical criticism, theory of modes. Second, ethical criticism, theory of symbols. Third, archetypal criticism, a theory of myths. Fourth, rhetorical criticism, theory of genres or genres. So can you tell me the four essays quickly? Historical, ethical, archetypal and rhetorical criticism. Okay. And along with these four essays, anatomy of criticism consists of a polemical introduction and a tentative conclusion. This is by Northrop Fry. Let's move on to the next work quickly. It is Structural Anthropology, published in 1973 by Claudi Levi Strauss. Look at him on the screen. He's again French, a French anthropologist. What is Structural Anthropology? It is a collection of text which introduced the concept or the idea of Structural Anthropology. What is Structural Anthropology? According to it, all the cultures have deep structures that are immutable. And also, all the cultural practices have similar counterparts in other cultures. That is structural anthropology, propounded by Claudi Levi Strauss in his book, Structural Anthropology, published in 1973. So can we repeat the question? Items in list one, match them with items in list two. The authors match them with their works. Foucault wrote The Archaeology of Knowledge. Derrida wrote Of Grammatology. Fry wrote Anatomy of Criticism, four essays. Whereas Strauss wrote Structural Anthropology. Done with question number three. Achai, comment if you like it. Question number four, which of the following is not a critical study by William Empson? Basically not a work by him. A, The Dyer's Hand. B. Milton's God, C. Some versions of the pastoral, and D. Seven types of ambiguity. Seven types of ambiguity is a very famous work by Emson, we know. Which work is not by William Emson? It is the Dyer's Hand. Who wrote Dyer's Hand? W. H. Auden. So now I will discuss about Auden today. The Dyer's Hand and Other Essays is the complete title of this work, published in 1962, written by Auden. 
Auden is a British American poet, was. And this De Dyer's Hand basically is a collection of Auden's essays, lectures, notes, aphorisms from early 1950s to 1962. And the central focus of this work, The Dyer's Hand, is poetry, and specifically Shakespearean poetry. And also Auden's whole experience of the 20th century is discussed in this work of his. So The Dyer's Hand and other essays, a 1962 work by British-American poet W.H. Auden. Rest all works are by Emson. Revise them. Emson wrote Seven Types of Ambiguity. He wrote some versions of the pastoral and he wrote Milton's God. Done? Let's move on. Question number five, last question of the day. Understanding poetry encapsulates the principles of understanding poetry was a very famous textbook in American colleges. Okay. So it tells or it brought the concept or the principle of a, new Aristotelianism, B, new historicism, C, new criticism, or D, the new left. Understanding poetry actually brought the idea of option D, sorry, option C, new criticism, new criticism. Look at the cover page of Understanding Poetry like this, a book written by Clent Brooks and Robert Penn Warren together published in 1938. This book, Understanding Poetry, influenced new criticism. And if I have to tell you about understanding poetry in one line, it said, if poetry is worth teaching at all, it is worth teaching as poetry. Poetry ko poetry hi rehne do. If poetry is worth teaching at all, it is worth teaching as poetry. Understanding Poetry by Clent Brooks and Robert Penn Warren, published in 1938. Easy brought the principle of new criticism. With this, we are done with all the questions of the day. I hope you like them. You will take a lot from this video and you're going to come back and revise these questions or take notes. Easy. Tick. This is Hina from Team Wallet. Take very good care of yourself. Tata. Bye-bye.